Luke chapter 12. Look at a couple places in the scripture today. Luke 12, 16, and he spake a parable unto them. This story is not true. It's, it's given a lesson, object lesson. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Whatever this ground had, he produced. It was an income. It was plenty. And he thought with himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. He's got a bounty above and beyond. Normal. That there's no room. And yet he thinks of himself, what am I going to do? Where am I going to put it? No thought to, what about the poor people? What about giving it away? What about others? And he said, this will I, notice the pronouns, I, 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 I. What shall I do? Because I have no, my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. You know what the guy's going to do? He's going to go out and he's going to build more storage centers. I'm amazing how many storage centers pop up. You know, these buildings where you go and you rent the space because your house is full of junk, your garage is full of junk, and now you gotta go buy this other place because you gotta fill something else with junk. But what the guy has here is not junk, is let's say wheat or barley. His crops like in the days of Joseph, the seven plentieth years, brought forth plenty that Joseph kept corn, beyond number, preparing for seven years of great famine. And Joseph gathered the corn for the people, for the famine, for others. Now there's no famine, there's no, but there is an increase, there's a plenty of this man, and he's thinking of himself, he's thinking, how well can I store everything up? I'll tell you what I do, I'll build more. And I will say to my soul, your eternalness, soul, thou hast made up good, goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, and drink, and be merry. <laughs> philosophy, American philosophy. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night, tonight, right now, tonight, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? And God said to this rich man, You're going to die tonight. And everything that you've done, he didn't get the chance to rebuild. He didn't get the chance to further his building program. He did not get that far. He has a ground that has produced plentifully. He's got much. I will rebuild. I will overbuild. He didn't get that far. And God said, tonight you're going to die. And whose stuff? Look. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? You don't take it with you into the grave in the eternal life. Now, in my time, I have heard of people who've been buried in their cars. I have heard of people who've been buried in extravagance of coffins. I, had, I know of, of extravagance of... Uh, Funeral buildings, mausoleums. I have known people who have put stuff in their coffin. When my wife Lisa died, we put some things in that coffin with her, but she couldn't take it with her. But we put it because we loved her. This keepsakes. And it's funny because... When I went to go buy the, the, the coffin for my wife, Lisa, 
they showed me all the models and stuff like that. And they have a tray inside the coffin that you can put valuables in. And when you close it, it can lock with a key. And when you close the coffin, it's also closed by the coffin lid. You can put whatever you want in that drawer. It stays in that drawer. All the pharaohs and their tombs and their treasures. Pharaohs did not take it to hell. And if there were any pharaohs that were saved, they didn't take it to heaven. No, man came along and put it in museums. And they put it in private collections. And today, the most stupidest thing said in, in America today, and I, I, I've heard my dad say it, and I, I've seen bumper stickers. He with the most toys in the end wins. Have you not seen what happens to the pharaohs with all their toys in the end ends up in someone's private collection it blends up in a museum pharaohs are not enjoying their treasures today stars and actors and actresses and billionaires and people of fame and people of riches and people of fortune and People uh, uh, who were who who were to be known of, people who made the headline, people who had money, people who had riches, who have died or who will die. You're not taking it with you. You can be buried with it, but you're not going to take it to heaven, or you're not going to take it to hell. God said that. There are people whose main goal in life is to gather it all before the end of their life and some will carry it over to I'll take it with me in the grave and there are people with sense to know that once they die they can't take it and they make out a will and they will it to family friends charities animals And there are people who not only will die by the saving grace and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be absent from that body and present with the Lord. And there will be foolish people who will die in the absence of God, in the absence of Jesus Christ, rebel against God, whatever means they rebel against Jesus Christ in the gospel, and they will die and they'll wake up in hell. Now we're looking at the rich man today. And a rich man can have riches today. And it don't have to be, you know, extravagant of riches. I mean, if you can comfortably pay your bills, if you got a roof over your head, transportation, shoes on your feet, clothing on your back, you're rich. You're richer than any third world nation. And the fact is, whatever you have, one day, somebody's going to dress you because you won't be able to dress yourself. And they'll put you in a hole. They will burn you. And already, at that moment, you take your last breath, you have gone off into eternity. And if you had died without Jesus Christ, you are lost. We have Luke chapter 16. There was a certain rich man which clothed in purple, find his clothing. Finest dyes. Purple was a rich color dye. Fine linen. Now the Bible says in Revelation that fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Not for this guy. Because he's going to die and go to hell. And fare subsequently every day. He's doing well. Man, he, he, he's got the life. 
got a, he's got a home beyond a homely needs. He's probably got food beyond just typical normal food. Got servants. He's living above and uh, maybe beyond what normal people would, would have. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, and he was laid at the gate full of swords. So this rich man had, had a gate that kept the poor people out. Desiring to be fed the crumbs from which fell off the rich man's table. Over the dog came and licked his swords. And it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. All right, just because you're rich doesn't give you longevity. The richest men in the world have died and health care can't help them. There are riches of men today and pharmacies won't be able to keep them alive. The rich man also died as the beggar died. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. And was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. Being in torment. Seeing Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. The rich man has eyeballs. The rich man that lived. How did the Bible say? He lived sumptuously. Verse 19. Now the rich man is in torment. He's tormented. He's tormented. And Lazarus is at rest. The, 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 the beggar is at rest in Abraham's bosom. But we're not looking at the beggar today. And the rich man recognized Lazarus. The beggar at his gate. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, a Jew. He's a rich Jewish Hebrew. And he still died. Couldn't stop him. And he went to hell. His family ship of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his riches could not prevent him from dying and it could not prevent him from going to hell. The other rich man we let God said, Tonight you're going to die. And who, who are you going to give yourself to? Because you ain't taking it with you. Have mercy on me. All the riches that man had. All the food that that guy had. And you know what he wants now? He wants mercy. He wants mercy. You can't buy mercy. There's no general store that has mercy. You can't go online.com and find mercy. Religion won't give you mercy. The stock market won't give you mercy. God will not give you mercy outside of Jesus Christ. Send Lazarus. Look at that. The man ordered servants in his life. And he is in hell. And he has the nerve to order Abraham. Who's in paradise. Send one of those men for me and get me. Get me a steak. Send one of those men and get the car ready. I want to go for a ride. Send my ballet, tell him I want, I want the black suit with the stripes. That he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Why doesn't he buy a bottle of water? Why doesn't he take his money and go buy a well? Because number one, he has no money. He was rich on the earth and now he is poor in hell. 
He had access to water and wine on earth. And there's no water in hell. Oh, when we get to hell, we're going to party. We're going to drink. No, you're not. The Bible, Jesus describes hell as a place of darkness. How can you drink beer when you need water to make beer? And this guy says, I just want a little drop of water. And cool my tongue. Why don't he pay for the electric bill to get AC? Why don't he run to the, uh, to the craft store or, or uh, the little uh, outsider shop and get one of them hand fans? You see people in the church. Because he has no money. There's no AC. There's no electricity. There's no hand fans. There's no relief. I bet he had relief when he lived on this earth. With the Chinese or Japanese rich people would have one man sit there and all he do is was pull, pull a rope up and down. And that rope was connected to a fan, a, a big waving fan for the person inside the office. And as he pulled that rope, it, it was fan and that'd be the air conditioning. He ain't got that down. Why don't he get in his car, close up the windows and put the AC? Because there is no car. There is no AC again. I am tormented in this flame. If you had money, it's been burnt up. If you had alcohol, alcohol burns. Let me let me pull my wallet up as it burns up in flames. Look at my fine clothes burnt up in the flame. The flame will burn everything up. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth the good things. Yep. Likewise, Lazarus, the evil things. Yep. But now he is comforted. The poor man is comforted. Because the poor man did what God told him to do. And thou art tormented because he rebelled against God. He rejected God. And the rich man that was screwed and rich man that had his knees met is now tormented in the flame and the fire. He can't even get a little drop of water, never mind a bottle of water. Okay, jump down. He says, verse 27, then, I, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him Again, he's ordering Lazarus through Abraham to my father's house. For I have five brethren, they may testify unto them. At least they also come to this place of torment. You know what else that rich man wants? Who had the money, who had the fame, who had easy living, had the good things. He's in hell. He has nothing. In hell, he is naked. You may have dressed him up for his tomb, but he ain't dressed up in hell. He ain't relieved in hell. He wants a drop of water. And then he's like, you go tell my family about this place of torment and tell them not to come. Again, people say, oh, oh my friends are all going to put you. If your friends are in hell today, their desire is that you do not come. And if you and your friends are in hell, you hate each other because there is no love in hell for God is love. You will no longer be friends in hell. And that man who, who ate subsequently, the man who had a comfortable, good living, who has nothing. He was poor. He, I mean, he was rich. He became poor. And he says, if I could have a little drop of water, if I can't get a little drop of water, I like some mercy. If I can't get no mercy, will you please tell my family, don't.
come here. You know what his family's doing right now? Enjoying the stuff that he left in his will for them to enjoy while he's tormented in the flame. I mean, if he thought enough to say, don't tell them to come to hell, he has thought enough of them on the earth to say, my last will and testament I give to, and then names the five brethren. That rich man who crops produce above and beyond the necessary needs and I'm going to go and rebuild and I've got great plans and I am going to eat, drink, and be merry. God said, tonight, you're dead. And who? And it's funny because, what was that? Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Well, 16. Look, look what God says. Then who shall those things be? The implication is that rich man there died without a will. That guy is me, 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 I, my, 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 my. He never thought about death. It looks like he died wilderness. And he may have died rich. But he went into hell penniless. He may have had a, 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 a plentiful harvest. And he would have gone in, because this is a parable, this is not a true story. He would have gone into hell like the other rich men said, oh, if I could just have a little drop of water. If I could just have some mercy. And notice both these stories. One a parable and one a true story. Luke 16 is not a parable. Neither rich man has a name. We know about Abraham. We know about Lazarus. And the fact is when you get into hell, you don't ever come out of hell. And you neither have a name in hell. You're nameless. Revelation. Chapter 20. Revelation. I saw, verse 11, I saw a great white throne, him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. Mother earth and all that gone bye-bye. Mars will go bye-bye. They were found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their work. Imagine those books are written. This man was rich. This man was poor. This man did okay. This man was a king. This man was a president. This man was a laborer. This man was an architect. This woman was a wife and a mother. This woman was a secretary. This woman was a fighter. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. The dead in hell delivered the dead within it. That's, that's where the rich man is. And hell coughs up the rich man. Hell will cough up every soul that's in it. Revelation 20. And they were judged every man according to their works. Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the death. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the, in the lake of fire. 
So all the names that's not in the plan's book of life at Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment, they are cast in the lake of fire. If their name is not in the Lamb's book of life, they don't have a name in hell. They don't have a name in the lake of fire. Now there will be names found in, at the great white throne judgment. There will be names that will be found in that book and they'll go off into the new earth or the new heaven and allowed to go to New Jerusalem. But at the great white throne judgment, there are people standing for, before God naked as Jesus Christ hung naked on the cross. They don't have their wallets. They don't have their material goods. They don't have nothing. And without faith and belief today in the church age, in Jesus Christ, they're without hope, without God, alone. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. When a man is in hell and then goes off in lake of fire for all eternity, of all the fame and all the riches and all the all that they had, even if their all wasn't much, they, they had enough. And in hell, in the lake of fire, without Jesus Christ, they are hopeless.